we define neuroscience as a study of the nervous system of the human body and we basically look into the structure and organization of the nervous system try to understand the roles different parts of the nervous system play and we try and develop an intuition of why each system plays the part that it does so Fundamentally, we break the nervous system into two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is the part that we say is the command center of the entire nervous uh, system. The peripheral nervous system assists this central nervous system by relaying information to and from the central nervous system. So there's a center, there's a command center that's making all the decisions based on the information that it receives and then it relays and then it communicates that information to the relevant organ. So receiving that information and then relaying that information to the relevant organ of the body is done through the peripheral nervous system. Within the central nervous system we say the brain and the spinal cord constitute the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system has the sensory division and the motor division. The sensory division would more or less relay all the sensory information to the central nervous system. The motor division would then be consisting of a communication channel that is going to relay motor information from the central nervous system to the relevant organ. Okay, so that motor information could be regarding movement of skeletal muscles, for example. All right. Within this motor division, we have a further division of autonomic nervous system and a somatic nervous system. Both of them have a differentiation amongst them, and we'll see that in the following slides. Also, that's a general outlook of uh, the human body with a different nervous system. I encourage you all to read through that, but the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are the two systems that constitute the nervous system of the human body. Within them, we have certain divisions and certain rules for our simplicity, and we're going to look into that in a bit detail. So let's look at the brain and the spinal cord, the central nervous system first. The brain, we say, consists of six parts. We say the cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. So we say largely these are the six parts of the brain. Each of them have a different role. Within cerebrum, we say the cerebrum is set up into four different parts. The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. Each part has a function of its own. The frontal lobe is associated with reasoning and thought. The parietal lobe is relevant with your sensory information. The temporal lobe is related to your hearing information. The occipital lobe is more or less related to your vision. Okay, the cerebellum is responsible for your muscle coordination, balance, posture, and the diencephalon, which is um, set up right here. We say it consists of the thalamus and the hypothalamus, which is this part right there. Okay, so the diencephalon consists of thalamus and hypothalamus. The thalamus is more related to directing some sensory impulses to the cerebrum whereas the hypothalamus is responsible for the regulation of uh, temperature or water balance or contraction and uh, dilation of the of the vessels in the in the body um, also the hypothalamus is the part that's uh, responsible for controlling your emotions regulating them the midbrain located right beneath the thalamus here is uh, responsible for your eyes and your hearing reflexes right beneath your midbrain is the pons part of your of your brain and it's uh, also relevant with your reflex actions below pons you will notice medulla oblongata which is part of your brain stem and this is also related to certain um, actions, regulatory actions, relevant to, for example, coughing or swallowing. So this is basically responsible for some of your voluntary and involuntary actions. Most of them are involuntary actions, digestion, blood pressure, for example. So that is the part of the brain that we've studied. And 
if you look at this diagram right here which basically lays out the structure of your spinal cord and divide it into these parts cervical thoracic lumbar sacral cosigial and each of these parts in the spinal cord are then associated with certain parts of your of your, of your body certain different organs and different and they each have certain responsibilities and we associate those with different uh, parts on the spinal cord so that is overall the structure of uh, a bird's eye view of the brain and the spinal cord which constitute the central nervous system move on to the peripheral nervous system but we keep track of the hierarchy also i would encourage you to pay some extra focus on this aspect where we want to emphasize on the communication between these systems okay so we know that nervous system is broken down in central and the peripheral but how does the communication what kind of communication is taking place between them uh, that is of particular interest to us okay so the red arrows here would probably represent a direction a sense of uh, command whereas the blue arrows are reflecting some communication upward communication to the central nervous system in terms of some sensory information that is going to assist the central nervous system for any decision making that decision making is then the, the result of that decision making the final decision whatever action needs to be taken is then relayed to the peripheral nervous system why these red arrows okay so we're going to simplify our discussion using these red and blue arrows so the peripheral nervous system we said was further broken was for, further had two divisions we label them as sensory and motor division sensory also known as afferent and the motor division also known as efferent division there's a difference between a and e right here but uh, in terms of what they do there's a huge difference which is the relaying of the sensory information right and then there's a relaying of the commands related to the motor information so these are the two parts in the peripheral nervous system that we set up it is uh, very intuitive to understand that the receptors the sensory receptors sensory nerve fibers the impulses that they generate the impulses are then transmitted to the central nervous system right and whereas whatever decision making whatever which is also in the form of uh, impulses is then relayed to the relevant part of the body via this motor division okay the motor division is then further simplified or uh, so further broken down into two systems we label them as the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system right so and both of them are similar in nature because they are both part of the motor division but what kind of uh, motor division is what we are interested in the autonomic nervous system is dealing with your involuntary actions whereas the somatic nervous system is dealing with your voluntary actions okay so actions that you do not control on your own through a informed decision making by yourself a conscious decision making those kind of actions which are happening on their own which you do not focus usually are controlled that information is relayed through this autonomic nervous system and this information is cardiac information for example or digestion related information or maybe respiration related which is a regular feature certain things uh, certain actions that are involuntary happening in your subconscious however they do need to be regulated and that information needs to be relayed to the brain so for example if you're um, running very fast and your heart needs to pump the blood faster to make sure the oxygen is available to different parts of the body um, sufficiently so there is some sensory information that needs that needs to signal to the brain to instruct the heart to pump faster okay so that sensory information is then relayed to the central nervous system however autonomic nervous system is what is 
receiving that information and relaying it, which is why you see a blue arrow here, because it is somewhat related to the sensory division as well. Once that information is available to the central nervous system, it instructs your brain, it instructs your heart to pump the blood faster, okay? So, but that instruction has to relay through this channel. Because it is a, it is basically a command and instruction, so it has to go through the motor division. However, this motor-based action is involuntary in nature, which is why we would categorize it as part of the autonomic nervous system. It's happening in involuntary, involuntarily. Whereas the somatic nervous system is about your voluntary actions. So if you want to hold a glass of water, there is some set of instructions that need to be relayed to your skeletal muscles. And that channel of communication is via your somatic nervous system. This is the voluntary action, whereas the involuntary action, all the information related to it is through these channels. So it's the differentiation between these two nervous systems is based on how whether that information is part of your voluntary action or involuntary action. Okay, so that's one categorization that we take uh, into account when we talk about the motor division. Within the motor division, in the autonomic nervous system, we have a further categorization of sympathetic division and a parasympathetic division. The idea is fairly simple. The sympathetic division is responsible for the communication that mobilizes your body in case of uh, flight, fright, and uh, flight, fight, and fright. The idea is to alert your body and that communication channel is via the sympathetic division. The complementary aspect of this is to bring your body back to the state of normalcy, back to the uh, situation of uh, feeling normal in the body and that kind of communication is through the parasympathetic division. So to conclude it, we defined our nervous system as a combination of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system we said constituted of the brain and spinal cord, each having their own parts and functions. Whereas the peripheral nervous system was meant to transfer and carry signals to and from the central nervous system. Within the peripheral nervous system, we had two divisions, the sensory division and the motor division. The motor division had an, an autonomic nervous system and a somatic nervous system. Within the autonomic nervous system, we had further two categories of sympathetic division and a parasympathetic division.